Friday, September 18th. A pattern shift on the west coast as we develop troughing and strengthening of a polar front jet. We have tropical storm beta coming together in the Gulf of Mexico. And a final wrap up of a rare tropical cyclone in western Greece. And we'll go ahead and do that now. The storm's name is Janos and it is dissipating. Sustained winds were about 60 miles an hour and gusts were up in the 70 to 80 mile an hour range. And that puts the storm about the equivalent of a strong tropical storm in the U.S. No reports of injuries or deaths, but there is property damage and numerous power outages. And now they're contending with the rain. A lot of areas there will get about 5 to 7 inches, and the storm will drift slowly to the south over the next couple days. And bringing things back to North America, things are getting a little bit troughy on the west coast, and this is sort of forming a Rex block with a strong ridge up to its north. The blocking effects are not going to be too significant. The patterns will manage to progress, but that will bring a trough onto the west coast and some deterioration of the weather. Downstream from the Four Corners up to Montana, we've got this ridge right here. That'll keep the weather pretty nice out through the central U.S. into the Midwest. Downstream from the ridge, we tend to see pressure rises, and most likely we're going to find a surface high somewhere in this area. Out over the Great Lakes into the southern U.S., we have a trough corresponding to some of the strongest cold air advection, and then out ahead of it, our departing Atlantic system. It's another record-breaking year out in the Atlantic, and we've run out of hurricane names, and we're starting on the Greek alphabet. This evening, we got Tropical Storm Beta. That's going to be something we're going to contend with over the weekend going into early next week. Let's start out with our older storms. Well, we've got Teddy out here, 125 miles an hour. So that's going to be in the upper end of Category 3. And we're expecting that to head just east of Bermuda. There's a track on that. So Bermuda will just be barely escaping the effects of this. Wilfred, that's the last of the conventionally named storms. That's a tropical storm, and that's going to follow in the footsteps of Teddy, and it's expected to recurve at this time and not affect the U.S. Now, the real wild card will be Beta. That's rapidly gaining strength, and it's expected to be a hurricane by Sunday night. It'll probably just be a low-end Category 1 storm, and it will weaken into a tropical storm as it recurves northward towards Port Aransas and Houston later in the week. You can see that this is a slow-moving storm, so there's likely to be some heavy rainfall accumulations along the coast. So what happened to Alpha? That's what I was wondering. Look up here. There's a little storm hiding off the right side of the chart. And it's only when you go to the top of the page do you find subtropical storm alpha. Yeah, this is a little system that they're covering up there near Portugal, crossing over the country. We're not going to really cover that, but that explains the gap in the Greek letter names. This is always a neat map to follow. This is the cumulative maximum wind gust. This is from wxcharts.com, and let's run that animation. This is going to be the GFS, which has come into line with the European solution. So you can either watch Teddy over there near Bermuda, or you can watch the left side of the chart and follow Tropical Storm Beta as it approaches Corpus Christi and then recurves towards Houston early next week. You can see that overall the strongest winds remain below 100 kilometers per hour, barely touching up at that range, which is in the 60 mile an hour sustained range. Now, let's take a look at the European solution. Now, we don't get the cumulative wind gust, but we do get the wind gust. So, we'll just check that out. There's the European model. Looks very similar to the GFS there, and 
moves it kind of up the coast and goes with a little bit more weakening as it passes Houston. And let's see what date we're looking at for impacts on the Corpus Christi area. That's going to be around Tuesday. Approaching the coast Monday, passing Corpus Christi Tuesday, moving up the coast Wednesday into Thursday as it passes Houston. So what it's showing right there on the European model, that dark brown, that's about 70 to 80 kilometers an hour, which is going to be about 40 to 50 miles an hour. So that's going to be a strong tropical storm. The GFS going a little bit stronger with that, and the hurricane phase should mostly be during the initial approach on Sunday. So there you go. That's the wrap-up of what's going on out in the Gulf. So shall we turn our attention to the current U.S. analysis? Let's do that. Well, it's a dry topic. Might as well make it fun. There goes our outgoing cold air mass, heavily modified, crossing over the track of Sally. And that's Sally there moving off the coast. So things are starting to return to normal. Up to the north, though, high pressure. Looks like that's centered in the western Great Lakes area. And we've just got this tremendous flow of north wind all through the eastern half of the U.S., and dew points have even come down in Texas. We had 70s out in this area, now it's down to 60s. Also, this area here had 70s a couple days ago, and now it's 60s. Yeah, I guess it's starting to feel a little bit like fall. There's the satellite loop in that shows all the cold air advection stratocumulus coming down through the Carolinas into Georgia. Looks like we have some sort of disturbance out in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's probably that area of disturbed weather connected to that tropical disturbance. Getting some anvil blow off from that. Maybe we can take a closer look down there. Yeah, that's going to be our new area of interest. That's going to be Tropical Storm Alpha very soon. Possibly as early as tonight or tomorrow. A 1031 Melbourne. <laughs> you know, it's Friday. Might as well have some fun here. I'm just kind of digging through my music folder, seeing what's in there. Yeah, 1031 Melbourne High. That's that big Canadian air mass moving across the Great Lakes. Very cool conditions this afternoon. 55 in a lot of places in Wisconsin and Michigan. And you get up into Ontario and Quebec. 40s, 46 up at Moosonee. We were seeing up, almost 90 up there. In fact, I think we were seeing 90s just a couple months ago. So I guess we're starting to normalize the weather a little bit. And off the Atlantic coast, we've got the remnants of Sally and the remnants of that old frontal system. That cold front has pushed offshore somewhere in that area. I don't know exactly where that is. But it's at least a few hundred miles out there. And in its wake, we've got that cold air advection pouring down from that region of high pressure over Michigan and Wisconsin. So it's going to be a cold night in much of the northeast U.S. You were waiting for it, weren't you? I think I've run out of music selections there as my fare of lighthearted silly music is a little bit thin. So let's get things back on track. Looks like we have an occlusion and a cold front moving into the Great Basin area. WPC does not have anything out there. So what's going on here? Well, this sure has the look of a baroclinic system. Now, one thing we know from sure from that upper air analysis is that there's a cutoff low off the coast of Washington and Oregon. Now, we've got all this cloudiness to contend with. That's not anvil or anything like that. That's actually part of a bear clinic system moving inland. And if we go back to basics and think about what we're looking at, most likely we have a jet stream running up like that, maybe up to the north. 
This stuff here, this is probably part of the so-called bear clinic leaf. And this over here is likely part of the occluded system. So just going off of basics, I would think that that is a cold front, probably extending down towards uh, central California. A lot of the clouds here are from warm air advection, so there's probably a warm front somewhere in this area and further up to the north an occlusion running about like that. Now we can also verify that with the water vapor imagery. Well, there you go. It's pretty obvious where the cutoff low is. Looks like that's coming onshore there in Oregon, and you can see some cold core convection developing there around Salem, and I guess it would be Eugene, somewhere in there. And out ahead of it, yeah, this is all the warm air advection cloudiness, and that would we, that's where we would find the active fronts, somewhere in there. Now, not much of a reflection at the surface. In fact, it looks like it's dominated by that old trough that we saw yesterday on the map. So much of the brunt of this system is likely in the mid and upper levels. Looking at the data, I can kind of fit these fronts in, and I'm seeing something like that. I would probably even maybe bring that back just a little bit. Maybe something like that. But the warm sector, yeah, that looks good. So what I would want to do is monitor the system, follow trends as the evening goes on, and reconcile everything to the upper level charts. And there's the patterns in the southwestern U.S. Whenever you see strong easterly winds in West Texas, that always means a cold front is lurking to the west. That east wind at Chihuahua, yeah, that kind of confirms it. So we get an old frontal boundary somewhere along the Continental Divide and possibly linking up to that system up in Utah. Out to the south, heat low, a barotropic warm core low there, and that's typically what we see this time of year with those 100 degree temperatures. So putting it all together, if you don't mind me, I'm going to use the European model. So we're looking at dew point, which is extremely important this time of year. It not only shows how much energy you have for convection, but it also shows the progress of air masses moving in and out. See, there's the dry air coming from the Great Lakes. Down to the south, yeah, there's that tropical depression coming together. Let's run the maps forward. So for tonight, the system continues to come together, and it drifts to a location about 200 miles east of Brownsville. Elsewhere around the country, things are mostly dominated by that big high up there in Quebec, covering all the way down into Texas with this big ridge, and that means a cool night in many places of the eastern U.S. Further south, we've got Tropical Storm Beta down there, which may become a hurricane over the weekend. Sunday, that should be big news down on the Texas coast, and we'll keep an eye on that for Monday. Elsewhere around the country, let's see, high pressure continues to slink, or no, I wouldn't say slink, it continues to slog itself eastward. Very slow movement to the east there. Looks like a progressive flow up there in Canada and not much going on out west. So Monday into Tuesday, that little tropical storm looks like it kind of beaches itself around Port Aransas. That's kind of what the GFS was doing. So that's probably going to be a tropical storm to a strong top tropical depression somewhere in there by this point. And then we have another Alberta clipper moving through on Wednesday. There comes that next reinforcement of cold air. The beached tropical depression, tropical storm, now moves northward through Louisiana on Thursday. Probably lays down a whole bunch of rain from Houston up towards Baton Rouge, Alexandria. And let's see, the next big change, not much going on. Looks kind of cool out east. And 
Yeah, and here comes another outbreak of cold air around the 26th. That's got a little bit of punch to it. See that dry air just kind of inf infiltrating everything. So that'll be something to look forward to in a little over a week. And before we part ways, I'll give you the very latest satellite imagery. This shows the growth of Tropical Storm Beta. One thing that does got me a little concerned is this is a little further north than what the European model had, but it is closer to the original GFS solution. So I guess we're somewhere in between on that, and we have yet to see how that's going to play into the formation. So it's going to be something to watch. Yeah, keep up on the satellite imagery tonight and tomorrow, and we may see growth into a strong tropical storm or Hurricane Beta. We shall see. If I have time, I may try to do a quick update tomorrow. And that's about all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining us. And if you're not a supporter, you can go to our Patreon. And we're having a drawing at the end of the month for a free instability scooty and hodograph handbook for new signups in September. So if you're not a supporter, this is the time to get in on it. And we've only got one new person this month, so your odds are pretty good. Anyway, we'll see you all next week. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.